Hello ladies and gents, welcome back your lovely, lovely faces to a brand new video here on the channel. Today, I'm going to give you the complete rundown and sections of where Amber actually appears in Elon Musk's autobiography. And it's not much, but there is an entire section on it. And obviously, we are going to start off with this page right by here, which is chapter 44. As you can see, two pictures of her rocky relationships. With A.H., who left a kiss mark on his cheek, and with Donald Trump, Errol Musk. And it does start off with Trump, but we're not going to do Trump. We're going to go straight in with her. So, Musk was not bred for domestic tranquility. Most of his romantic relationships involve psychological turmoil. The most agonizing of them all. Straight away, guys. Agonizing of them all was with the actress A.H., who drew him into a dark vortex that lasted more than a year and produced a deep-seated pain that lingers to this day. It was brutal, he says. The relationship began after she made an action movie called Machete Kills, which features an inventor who wants to create a society on an orbiting space station. Musk agreed to be a consultant because he wanted to meet her, but that didn't happen until a year later. First of all, it won just to meet her on the film. He was actually a fan of the first Machete uh, film, which they have uh, conveniently left out of this. But uh, yes, yeah, so he got that part by there. When she asked if she could come visit SpaceX, I guess I could be called a geek for someone who can also be called a hot chick, she says jokingly. Musk took her for a ride in a Tesla, and she decided that he looked attractive for a rocket engineer. Remember now, this is when she was with Johnny Depp in 2013, when she first met him. She next uh, saw him when they were in line to walk the red carpet at New York's Metropolitan Museum Gala in 2016. A.H., then 30, was on the brink of an explosive divorce from Johnny Depp. She and Musk talked at the dinner and then the after party. Reeling from her relationship with Depp, she felt that Musk was a breath of fresh air. A few weeks later, she was working in Miami and Musk came to visit. They stayed at a poolside villa he had rented at Miami Beach's Delano Hotel, and then he flew her and his sister up to Cape Canaveral, where a Vulcan 9 launch was scheduled. She thought it was the most interesting date she had been on. For his birthday that June, she decided to surprise him by travelling from Italy where she was working, to the Fremont Tesla factory. As she got near, she pulled to the side of the road and picked some wildflowers. Working with his security team, she hid in the back of a Tesla and popped out with the flowers when he approached. Yeah, you could see what she uh, does with her, with the way she actually gets and tries to get her grips into people. You can see how she does it. Their relationship deepened in April 2017 when he flew to be with her in Australia where she was filming Aquaman, in which she played the princess warrior lover of a superhero trying to save the world. They walked holding hands through a wildlife sanctuary and did the treetop rope course, after which A.H. planted a kiss mark on his cheek. He told her that she reminded him of Mercy, his favourite character in the video game Overwatch, so she spent two months designing and commissioning a head-to-toe costume so she could roleplay for him. We actually have that photo here, I'm going to show you now. And with this by here, saying that she designed and commissioned her head to toe for two months. No. The outfit is out there. You can just say, I want someone to make this. And that's what you do. She didn't fucking design it. Overwatch team did. Her playfulness, however, was accompanied by the type of turmoil that attracted Musk. His brother and friends hated her with a passion. That made it distaste for a Justine Pale. She was just so toxic, Kimball says, a nightmare. Musk's chief of staff, Sam Teller, compares her to a comic book villain. She was like the Joker in Batman. He says she didn't have a goal or aim other than chaos. She thrives on destabilizing everything. She and Musk would stay up all night fighting and then he would not be able to get up until the afternoon. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Very familiar. They broke up in July 2017, but then got back together for another five tumultuous months. The end finally came after a wild trip to Rio de Janeiro that December, with Kimball and his wife and some of the kids. When they got to the hotel, Elon and A.H. had another of their flame-throwing fights. 
She locked herself in the room and started yelling as she was afraid she would be attacked and that Elon had taken her passport. Just with all of this by here, just that one massive sentence right by there. Where have we seen and heard this before? We heard her yelling about it in uh, recorded voice messages. We even know that Johnny Depp even said this herself. Yeah, she'd do this. She'd lock herself and claim all these things. So there is a pattern with her. And like in yesterday's video when I described her, you know, described what the chaotic evil meant by what Grimes was saying. This is it. And when Elon Musk's head of security says she just wanted chaos, she just wanted to, to destroy everything. This is it. The security guards and Kimball's wife all tried to convince her that she was safe. Her passport was in her bag and she could and should leave whenever she wanted. She really is a very good actress, so she'll say things that you're like, wow, maybe she's telling you the truth, but she isn't, Kimball says. The way she can create her own reality reminds me of my dad. Let that sink in. We've gone over that as well regarding Elon in the last couple of videos. But with this, she just wanted to destroy everything. Because she is, by the sounds of it, now even by all these people, so you've got obviously the head of security, you've got uh, Elon's family, everyone. She's just nothing but a destructive chaos. She didn't care about anything. You know, there's so much stuff going on that it just shows how much of an evil person she is. She doesn't care about anyone but herself. She doesn't even care about her own family. And reading this now, and say I've read through most of this autobiography now as well, and, you know, she pops up here and there. I do actually worry for the safety of her child. I really do now. Before, I was like, no, she can't be that, you know, can't be that cruel or that evil. But reading what other people now are like, yeah, she's this. She's the Joker. She just wants chaos. She just wants everything to burn. It's like, wow, that child best be safe. Amber concedes they had an argument and that she got rather dramatic. But she says that they resolved the fight that evening, which was New Year's Eve. They went to a party, celebrated the ringing in of the New Year, standing on the balcony overlooking Rio. She's in a low-cut white linen dress. He in a partly unbuttoned white linen shirt. Kimball and his wife were there, along with their cousin, Russ Rive, and his wife. To show that they had made up, Amber sent me pictures and videos of the evening. In one of them, Elon wishes her a happy new year and kisses her passionately on the lips. She came to the conclusion that Musk cultivated drama because he needed a lot of stimuli to keep him invigorated. Even after they broke up for good, the Embers endured. I love him very much, she says. She also understands him well. Elon loves fire she says, and sometimes it burns him. The fact that Elon was attracted to her was part of a pattern. It's really sad that he falls in love with these people who are really mean to him, Kimball says. They're beautiful, no question, but they have a very dark side, and Elon knows that they're toxic. So why does he do it? When I ask Elon, he lets out his large laugh, because I'm just a fool for love. I am often a fool, but especially for love. That's just the main part, the main section of her. But with all of that there, and with her being interviewed or you know, spoken to about this, and her saying, oh, I still love him, this, that, and the other. No, she doesn't. She does not love him. Personally, I think he's got a lot of stuff on her. She may think she has things on him, but I'm telling you right now, you don't become the richest man in the world by being on side and doing everything that other people tell you to do. You just don't do it. But it does get more. So as we go into the uh, the find section of this, uh, of the e-reader I'm using, you put her in, here we go. So we got the chapter we've just done and everything else. And uh, as you can see, this is one of the first sections is obviously chapter 24, where we got that there. But then you've also got a few other parts of her name. It was all by here. You know, it's uh, this part up by here. Where was it? Oh, I've lost it. There we go. This is another part, but it was actually regarding the other person in the uh, Rocky relationships. You know, says Musk just sat there silently. He was brooding about A.H. and about his father. But then we also got this one here. We've just been to that one there. More by here. You know, devastated by the breakup with her and the news that his father, the child with the woman he had raised as a stepdaughter, 
Musk went through periods when he oscillated between depression, stupor, giddiness, and manic energy. And there's, you know, there's quite a few other things there, because if you just go through it, you know, it's like, it's like celebrations and everything else. And it's just like one line here or one line there, because it goes through, you know, breakup and everything else. You do have the part with with Grimes as well. And, you know, she wished, you know, 2018, she rang him to, you know, say happy birthday and all these other things. And it's just like, wow, okay, you know, we got EM and uh, Bri uh, Grimes. And it was just going through where her names, they literally just pop up by here. Like, oh, she's this or she's that. And it's a, a, a very interesting autobiography. And it's actually one of the better ones I've actually read in the last, I'd probably say the last decade. There hasn't really been a lot of interesting things that come out about people where, you know, there's like... Elon Musk has got, I think he's got like six or seven books out about him. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, they all got the similar kind of books. But with this one, it does go into her, the relationship with her, as we've seen. And it shows that she is nothing but a horrible, evil woman. That is it. And you've got people out there defending her. Yeah. To me, that just goes to show that those people are probably like her and they will step on anyone and hurt anyone just to get what they want. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates and I'll see you all soon.